Hi everybody, Hunt Fit Ted here and TJ, the real TJ Bright. For those of you that don't know, this is my 17 year old son. Yep. And my main hunting and fishing partner. We're down here in Gulfport, Mississippi right now at my dad's house. Yesterday, we caught a couple of big old redfish out on the Mississippi Delta Flats. Uh, stay tuned for an upcoming video on that. But today we're talking turkey. We're talking opening day of Missouri turkey season. And man, it was exciting. That day, we both ended up with our biggest gobblers ever, both on public land. Opening day, doubled up. It was one for the ages. What did you think? Yeah, it was pretty exciting. Um, took a while to get mine, but we got it. Yeah, yeah. So it started off, I didn't get any video footage of my turkey because it started off early. I uh, had several gobblers working in different directions and they were all with hens and there was a lot of birds around and I had to make a commitment to go to, go to one group of uh, two gobblers and I think two or three hens. As I'm working over there, I set up a couple times. It just wasn't working. They were not, they were responding, but they weren't coming in. So I had to ditch everything, including the camera, the GoPro, everything. And I, I struck out with just my gun and my binos. And I snuck up on this big old gobbler as he was strutting back and forth on a, on a little finger. Uh, I, I snuck up on him, got to about 30 yards away. He never knew I was there. It still took another 10 minutes of just seeing his top of his fan and the top of his blue head periodically as he was working back and forth. Finally, I, I took another step forward and I stepped up on a log and I was able to shoot, aim down onto him to where I could get the top of his head without shooting all the dirt. And I blasted him at 30 yards, never knew I was there. So then I, I unfortunately, you know, it got warm that day and I had to cut this bird up and get it up into the cooler on ice pretty quickly. Um, and then I wanted to hunt with TJ. He was bound to determine early to, to try to kill one himself, but what happened with your early morning? Um, yeah, it didn't really work out. There was probably like 50 gobbles, but none of them were really close to me, and oh, and a few of them were like over where he was, so I didn't want to just go flying over there and tear up the whole woods. So he gave it a valiant effort. Um, I got my tag on one, and I he was probably about a 25 pounder, my biggest bird ever. Uh, he had inch and a quarter spurs and a 10 and a half inch beard. And so I, I got him back up to the truck and came back down. By the time I did all that, you know, it was three and a half miles one way. Of course, the e-bike really helped out with that. But by the time I got back, it was what, 11 o'clock? Yeah. And so uh, I knew that we had one really good long, long way around approach to some of the prime area. Uh, I knew there was going to be birds in there and, and that's what we did. So uh, we just took our long way around and sure enough, right about 1130, we started approaching the really good area and I'll let you take it from there. Um, basically just walked up this ridge and there was like a finger that went down off the ridge to our right and we were just walking and periodically calling and then we just heard a gobble like 80 yards away and we only heard one and we just sat down right where we were and then like six minutes later i think just saw a blue head going through the trees i never did get to see him until he was flopping uh keep in mind we had just got back from tennessee our second leg of the tennessee tour uh sunday evening barely had time to unpack and then repack and then we got up at 3 a.m. so it was a it was a, a long few days of hunting there so when I got back down after taking my bird up at 11 o'clock he was tired obviously right and as we were doing our long way around approach we were we were climbing climbing up a southern hillside and it was hot it was dry, the leaves were so loud, but I knew we were working our way towards something. He was getting less and less interested, and um, it just goes to show, just gotta keep persistence. You gotta stay mentally focused. That's, to me, that's the biggest challenge in turkey hunting is staying mentally engaged, mentally focused, because they'll, those birds are so fickle, they'll just take it right out of you. And so will the warm conditions, the sunshine, and, uh, but anyway, it was an awesome opening day. We doubled up with our biggest gobblers ever. 
and I couldn't be more proud to do it with my, my best hunting buddy, TJ Bright. What are your final thoughts? Um, deer season now. Yeah, now that turkey season's over, we've shifted focus to better archery, right? We're gonna focus in on better archery this year. We've already begun that process, took a bit of a hiatus during turkey season, and now we're getting focused. We're gonna catch some more redfish in the meantime, and yeah. some specs, and stay tuned for more videos on that. And then uh, once we get back to Missouri, it's gonna be better archery and summer scouting, big bucks coming your way. Dude, yours is bigger than mine. Dude, that was perfect. Yes. Did you see him right before? You, like you, the last time you Six called, minutes. did you see? I him? I never saw him. I saw him right. I could hear. I knew he was right here. Uh huh. And I could hear him. And he was right behind that little tree right there. And you started to call, and I and I wanted to like. Obviously, I couldn't tell you not to call, but like he was so close. I was uh huh. Like, oh jeez. But I knew that even if he ran off, I could have stood up and probably got a shot. <laughs> That's how you draw it up, right there, huh, buddy? That's the old gobbler that I had the history with from last year. That I'm sure like of it. Five minutes total. Six minutes on the on the uh, recorder. So like seven minutes from the first time we heard him gobble. Um, yeah, six and a half minutes. Yeah. <laughs> what time is it? What do we got? Uh, it's like twelve fifteen, probably. A twelve twenty gobbler. Nice. Teach is that your first public land gobbler? Yeah. It sure is. It's only my third one ever. Nice job, buddy. Nice job. Dude, you blasted destroyed him. Destroyed him. Look at all the blood right there. Blasted him. I kind of just smushed his head, obviously, but it was already like that. It was all tore up. I don't see any blood, but... 
There's dogs oh, yeah. everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just let him eat. Look at those dudes. Woo. Big old beard on him. Nice job, buddy. <laughs> so this, where I'm standing is where the gobbler is. Where that decoy is, TJ was right against that tree right there. Right next to the right of the decoy. And I was right behind him, called just a couple of times. We actually, we came up over, coming from this way, from down, down in the bottom. And we got to the, close to the ridge top and we called a couple of times. And then I bet he was coming to that. And then we got to the ridge top and I started calling real soft. And he responded right away. And he was a hundred yards away. He was probably going to the initial calls. And TJ and I got set up real quick. Just basically took a few steps and set up at the most possible, easiest way possible. And we waited about six minutes and here he came. I never, I never even did see him. I kind of figured he might sneak around to that side though, because I was calling back over to my right to make sure that we brought him in. Nice job, Tej. Yeah. Was that fun or what? Yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> All right, we got some work to do, and then we're gonna catch some trout. Oh yeah. Uh, heard him, I could hear him like coming up the hill and he went quiet after the one gobble so I was pretty sure he was coming in anyway and then it was, I think he was like probably right there by that big tree and then, and I saw a little flash of him uh -huh. and I could tell he was close because I could hear him and then I saw him and then I flipped the safety off and everything and he just went up right here and he was walking whenever I shot him but like he wasn't bobbing his head or anything so mm -hmm. I knew that I was just gonna let him eat a few. Did you see him in the strut at all? No. No? And then... I didn't hear him drumming, did you? No. Yeah. I could just hear him. He was scratching as he was coming up here. Either that or he was just walking really loud. I thought I heard scratching or something over there, but I, I had that tree next to me and I was just not at an angle that I could record in that direction. I first heard him whenever he was probably like 30 yards that way and I thought that it was like a squirrel or something at first or I like wasn't sure. And then I heard it again, and I was like, oh, yeah, that's definitely him. <laughs> awesome. Well, we doubled up on opening day, Tej. Yeah. Hell, yeah. Awesome. Nice shot, Now we got to wait a week. <laughs> yep. Yep, got to wait a week. We'll just come back down and do the same thing. Sounds good. <laughs>